Hey guys, today I want to talk about culture a little bit. But before I talk about culture, I want to say something. A lot of guys are always asking me about, hey, do we have a lot of um, women come into the Philippines? And this week we had uh, two women come into the Philippines, actually. A mother and daughter, um, expats. And they're, they're moving down towards Davao. And I'd like to give them a big shout out to Julie and Laura, if you're out there watching. Um, I just thought it was kind of cool because to have two come in like that. And usually we have sometimes an American um, man and American woman who are a couple who are married usually come in. And this here time, the, the, the daughter is married, um, the, mo the mother is not. And it was just kind of fascinating to, to meet them. We actually spent three days together this week. So we had a lot of time to talk and stuff like that. And it was kind of interesting to see somebody come here from the U.S., as a woman um, and, and see them come in here and, and try to adjust and, and hopefully they're adjusting down there in, down in Davao right now. And I just want to give them a big shout out and, and wish them the best down there. But anyway, guys, I want to talk a little bit about culture here. Okay. And I want to talk a little bit about um, a part of culture that a lot of Americans just don't get. We've talked about this in bits and pieces here and there, and, and we might've even did a video on it way back or whatever. Um, and it's a little bit about a lot of guys don't get this part of the culture over here. And this is what it is. A lot of guys, when they start dating the women over here, they never ask the right questions. A lot of the girls will stay quiet until it's too late. Okay. And a lot of guys that, that talk to OFW women, what they don't realize is most o OFW women are kind of like the breadwinner of the family. If, a, if somebody dies in the family, they're the first one to send money back to bury the, help bury the person. If, if somebody is sick in the family, that's the first person they go to for cash. Um, they, they, use, if they usually, sometimes they have kids already. <clears throat> sometimes they go over there from the time they turn 21 or 18 or whatever, and they stay there till they're 40 or 50, some people. I've, I've seen some people that, that left to become an OFW at like tw in, their, in their early 20s and come back in their 50s. And they, they made it, might have come back once or twice in that time. And some of them stay over there, man. They just, they just make a living over there and make their friends there. And they supply the family with money. And they save half the money for themselves. So when they come back at age 50, guess what? They got a, a ton of money to buy a house or whatever uh, to build something. And they have some family property or whatever. And they build on that or whatever. But here's the thing. If you marry one of these OFWs, at an early age and you're talking to her online, the thing that you, have, you need to keep in mind is this, is that if you marry her and she no longer has a way to earn money, even if she's working in the Philippines and she's kind of like the breadwinner in the family, maybe she went to college or something like that, and she's making decent money and you take her off that job, guess who's next in line to pay? <laughs> you. <laughs> in a lot of cases, that's the way it is. It's not always like that, but you want to make sure that you find these things out and you set boundaries in the beginning because some women just don't know how to say no. So if you say, Hey, listen, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, um, pay for any of your family needs just to let you know, is that okay? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. They're afraid to say, no, you have to pay. You know, they're, 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 they're terrified of saying it. So you have to kind of be careful at the type of girl you're going after because, and I'm not saying all OFWs are like that. Okay. Cause it, I was lucky um, my girlfriend was an OFW, but she wasn't one of the people that was sending money to everybody in the family. Okay, so that that was a good thing. Now, and I'm not saying everybody is like this, but it's probably more likely than not that at some point they're going to hit you up for, for some money or what have you. And they're going to say, hey, listen, honey, I need some money. I need, you know, $500 for my brother. He's sick. Um, for my aunt, she's dying. Or I need to help pay for the funeral. And, you know, a lot of guys have to come to realize that a Filipino family is different than an American family because of that culture. It's a, it's a culture of where whoever has the most money in the family usually is the one who has to help chip in. And, it, and it's not like that throughout everywhere in the Philippines. Each island kind of has their own culture, but that is a big part of Philippine culture. And it's, it's Americans kind of take that as a bad thing where Filipinos look at it as a good thing. And I, if you really think about it, they're looking out for their family. And I know as Americans, we're kind of taught that once you get married, that's your new family. 
Okay, and your old family is your old family. Of course, in the United States, I think if, if, if a member of our family had some financial issues or sick or they needed some money for something, I think most of us would probably chip in for that. So why do we treat our Filipino wife differently than if we were married to an American woman? You know, and she had some financial problems in her family. And, of course, you know, so there are times when we're not going to chip in. Like if they have, you have a brother-in-law that's a drunk or something like that. You're not gonna, obviously, you're not going to be chipping in for something like that. <clears throat> and the same would go over here. And I think that, you know, we got to kind of be careful. And you've got to have your eyes wide open over here a little bit more. And also, a lot of times, we'll, go, we'll talk about breadwinners over here. Uh, women breadwinners. So there's a lot of women breadwinners over here. When I, they're the ones who bring the bread home and put it on the table for, for their family. They're out working. They could be working as a security guard. They could be working in a store. They could be working as an accountant or something. And they just, they are the ones that bring home all the money for the family. The mother, the father, the, the, the you know, maybe an aunt and an uncle that live in the house or some cousins or nephews or, or their own children or what have you. Or even a husband that's maybe disabled or something like that. They, they tend to be like that. But some supply the family. Most A lot of the women here tend, tend to be single breadwinners. And it's kind of funny to see that over here. because And, you know, of course, if somebody's married to something that's different. Because there's a lot of married couples over here. Um, the, the men are the breadwinners. But I'm, I'm talking about single people over here. The single women over here that are breadwinners. And there's a lot of them. It seems like... A good chunk, 50%, over 50% of the women here seem to be breadwinners. It seems like that, you know, and I'm not sure if that's a, that's factual or not. It just seems like that. When you meet women, usually they're the ones bringing all the money into the family, unless it's a married couple. Now, that's different. I'm talking about, like, the women just tend to be the ones that bring, put the food on the table all the time, unless they have a boyfriend or they have a husband or something like that. But I notice like the women over here really, really suffer a lot of the times. And, and a lot of Americans come over here and they act like they're going to be the, their savior or whatever. And, and sometimes they are, but then all of a sudden they get caught up in, in, in this, this, this thing about money with the families. And they're like, well, I'm not going to spend money on your mother and your father and your aunt and your uncle and, and be supplying food for your nephew, nephews, nieces and, and all that. I'm just not going to do that. And well... That's part of the culture over here, you know, and sometimes it, it works out like that. Um, if you set clear boundaries before you get married or before you live with somebody, you're way better off than if you don't, okay? That way there, and if you might even think about writing them down and say, hey, listen, I want you to understand this. If we get in a relationship, I'm not going to do this. And you agreed to it, you know, and make sure you make that crystal clear with them you know, when you're talking to them, because it, they, they need to know that you're not going to chip in. Or, or, and here's the other thing that you can do is this. And this is what I do. I give my girlfriend so much a month. And this is up to you. Don't, don't write to me and say, hey, Steve, how much would you give your girlfriend? It depends on how much you're making. Okay. Um, I give her so much a month. If she wants to give that to somebody in her family or help out somebody in her family, hey, have at it because guess what? That's her money. I give that to her as, as her money and I have no say in it. So if she does want to help somebody, that way there, she's all set, you know? I understand that that, that is their culture, okay? And if you take a girl away from their, their work or whatever um, and they have kids and they want to put them through college, guess who's going to put them through college? You, you know? And you have to realize that too. Like with with my girlfriend, I I I put her daughter through college through nursing school, and and she does very good in nursing school. She does very very well, and I, you know, I understand that that's part of me taking my girlfriend away from her job and her being around me twenty four hours a day, and I'm okay with that. If you're not okay with that, make sure that you're clear, because. The girl that you're dating might want that, that their kids to have a college education. And if you don't offer that college education to these kids, they might not want to be with you. Make sure that they, they, they understand that you're not going to pay for that if you're not going to pay for it. Make sure they understand how everything's going to go with the money. 
Because a lot of guys that are coming over here, they have limited funds. They're on limited funds. A lot of guys don't forget this. This is one of the things that most older guys forget. Is as, as you age, you're going to need more money for, for your health and welfare for, for medical checkups possibly diabetes, going to see the doctor, going to see a heart doctor, maybe getting a heart operation or something, or more for medications, more for insurance or what have you. So are you gonna be able to afford that? So you guys gotta think, because, yeah, and you have to think more long-term in the Philippines, which is a, 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 something that most guys don't do. Most guys that come into the Philippines, they do not think long-term. Long you know, they think short-term. They don't think about when they're 75. They don't think, well, geez, I'm making 2,500 or 3,000 a month. I'm gonna spend it all. You know, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna live up my life or whatever. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna live my life and I'm gonna, I'm gonna live it really well. I'm gonna spend all my money. And then they come to 70 or 72 and all of a sudden their insurance is sky high. Then what? You know, you don't have all that money saved. And that's why when you're in that sweet spot budget, you should be saving some of that. You know, so just, you know, the two to $3,000 range, if you're in that range, save money put some money in the bank put some money aside in your u.s bank so when you need it you can just take it out in your atm or whatever and pay the hospital bills or if you need extra medication you need to pay more for your insurance you're all set you have it anyway guys god bless take care i hope you enjoyed today's show remember stay focused on the future guys always be thinking about the future over here because you're older a lot of guys come over here they think they're 17 year olds when they hop off that plane you know and they got the gray hair and they're in their 60s or 70s or whatever, and they act like, like they're 17-year-olds. And, and you know what? We're not going to stay healthy forever at our age. You know, the, we're in God's waiting room right now. And, you know, it's a hell of a waiting room over here in the Philippines. But you know what? We have to also use our heads. God bless, guys. Take care.